Hello, this is Chaplain Stevens with the New Jersey Institute of Theological Studies. And uh, I want to give you a short uh, lesson um, dealing with uh, how the enemy renders us ineffective. You know, one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, when you look in the book of Acts, uh, the early church didn't have a lot of the things that we have. They didn't have internet, they didn't have telephones, they didn't have uh, airplanes, cars, and uh, a lot of the modern conveniences we have. But even with a lack of modern uh, conveniences, they were more effective at winning souls and building communities and making an impact. Uh, we have all these modern things, and yet sometimes <clears throat> on Sunday morning in our church, you know, we're lucky we have one person except Christ. And sometimes it may be one person in a month or maybe one person in six months. It just seems like we're less effective at winning souls uh, as time goes on. Uh, we're more concerned about church membership than discipleship. And so I want to talk about five things that I believe that the devil does to keep the church ineffective. Uh, the first thing I would say is if the devil can keep you away from the Word of God, he renders you ineffective. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 1 says, In the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, the only way you're going to give heed to a doctrine, a devilish doctrine, is if you don't know what's in the Bible doctrine. So we have to be ever on our guard about false doctrine and false teaching. And you see, the thing about it is a lot of times, you know, I hear people talk about the world and how rotten the world is. But the enemy attacks us from our pulpits. He attacks us inside of the church. You know, I'm more afraid about what comes over a pulpit than I am uh, some gangbanger on the street. You know, uh, if you give the gospel to the gangbanger, he can be saved. But if you give a false gospel to the gangbanger, he's not going to get saved. He may join your church, but he's not going to be committed to Christ. In a lot of our churches, they preach prosperity more than they preach Jesus. And so it's a, tra it's a tragic time we're living in because with all of our modern conveniences, the gospel is not being preached in its fullness. You know, one of the things I always respect about uh, Billy Graham, you know, Billy Graham was a gospel preacher. And sometimes, you know, we wonder why was Billy Graham so successful at winning souls because Billy Graham's primary message every time he preached was, Jesus Christ died for your sins. And we're not preaching that in, in the way we should. We preach everything but that. And so we wonder why our churches aren't filled and why more people aren't getting saved. That's the reason why. And a lot of it stems from the fact that as Christians, we don't know what's in our Bibles. We don't read our Bibles. You know, Bible study sometimes is the least attended activity in our churches. And it's sad. Uh, you know, anytime you got a church with 50 or 100 people, and you only have four or five people showing up for Bible study, that shows you where the priority in your church is. And the other sad thing is in a lot of our Bible studies, we don't really study the Bible. We don't really dig. And, and, and glean from the scriptures the way we should. A lot of our Bible studies are just uh, testimony services. Everybody's got a word to share, and the teacher isn't really teaching. So, you know, it's no wonder our, our, our saints are not growing and we don't have true discipleship in our churches. So, number one, yeah, if the devil can keep you away from the Bible and keep you from studying the Word of God, he renders you ineffective. In Acts 17 11, uh, the Bereans heard Paul teach and after he taught they said we're going to search the scriptures to make sure what you're saying is accurate and true and Paul didn't uh, go off on them he commended them because of their diligence in searching the scriptures and that brings me to the second thing that the devil does to render us ineffective one of the things that the devil does to render us ineffective is a lot of, in a lot of our churches we're more afraid of our leaders than we are of God you know, Paul didn't get mad when the Bereans challenged him. He commended them. Peter didn't get mad when Paul uh, rebuked him for the way he treated the uh, Gentile, uh, Gentiles in, in Galatia. You know, a lot of times our, our leaders and our uh, pastors have become like gods. You know, we're, we're, we're more afraid of what they say than what God says. I've seen so many churches where pastors have so much control that when somebody uh, 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 confronts them with, with biblical truth, the person that brings the biblical truth is often labeled a heretic. But the Bible has to stand alone. You know, Martin Luther was, all, was a, had a contract put out on him when he tried to remind the Catholic Church that they strayed away from biblical truth. 
you know, anytime uh, biblical truth is, is attacked in favor of denominational dogma, we got a problem. So that's what the enemy does. If the enemy can get you to spout your denominational dogma more than the word of God, then you're going to be rendered ineffective. Number three, uh, one of the things that the enemy does to us is he keeps us from our prime directive. The prime directive for the church is to make disciples, to preach the gospel, to win souls. If you look at Acts 1 and 8, it tells you right there the reason why God filled this church with the Holy Spirit. So we become witnesses. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the Pentecost experience, we, we try to recreate Pentecost every Sunday. We forget Pentecost was not given so we could recreate Pentecost every Sunday. But it was so we, it could be a launching pad to take the gospel to a lost and dying world. If you remember, one of the things, the instructions uh, at Pentecost was that the church would preach in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. But right after Pentecost, the church got immediately lazy and brain dead, and they didn't go fulfill the Great Commission. So God had to send persecution to the church to make the church go into the world and preach. And it took a courageous deacon named Philip to go into Samaria. Nobody wanted to go into Samaria. You know, Samaria was sort of like Camden. Nobody wants to go into Camden or Newark or, or some of these uh, cities that are rough. God wants the gospel preached everywhere. And so if you're a Christian and you're a minister and you, your, your concept or your idea of evangelism is standing behind a pulpit, you missed it. You missed the big picture. God expects us to go. The Great Commission says go. You can't go standing from a pulpit. God expects us to go into the hospitals, the prisons, the psych wards, the mission field, the jungle, the desert. He wants us to take the gospel everywhere. And uh, you can't do that standing behind a pulpit. Number four, uh, one of the things that the devil does to get us uh, 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 ineffective is he wants us to focus on things that are non-essentials. You know, one of the things that we uh, have a tendency to do sometimes is we focus on non-essentials. You know, anything that's not related to salvation can be rendered a non-essential. You know, I've seen Christians argue over things like whether a woman should wear pants or, you know, whether, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we should uh, play sports or whether we should, you know, go to the movies. You know, when I'm talking to a non-believer, the thing that non-believer needs to hear is that Jesus died for their sins. He needs to know that Jesus loves him. He needs to know that uh, he can be forgiven and, 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 and heaven, is, heaven is theirs and they just believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for their sins. And so often we get focused on things that are non-essential, and, and it clouds the simplicity of the gospel. The gospel message is simple. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you look at verse 17, it says that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, he came to save it. But we make salvation hard. You know, when the man in, in Acts chapter 16 asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? Paul didn't say he had to be baptized. He didn't say he had to join a church. He didn't say he had to wear certain clothes. He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Simple salvation. We complicate it. The devil loves to complicate the salvation message. And it renders us ineffective. And the last thing I want to... Uh, say is uh, that, that the enemy uses the render as an effective is if the devil can keep us arguing and fighting amongst ourselves and not be able to work together we're ineffective I've seen so many times where Christians just can't get along we argue over dumb things we separate over idiotic things we don't we haven't learned how to gather at the foot of the cross and simply unite together for the one goal and that's to win the world to Jesus Christ you know, arguing over, uh, you know, some things that are just idiotic, you know, and that's why we have so many denominations, and we can't even come together over simple things like salvation. Uh, you know, if you were to get 10 Christians from 10 different denominations, and you would ask each one of them, how do you get saved? you probably get 10 different answers, but there really is only one answer. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. We're saved by grace through faith, not works, lest any man should boast. And so take heed to these, uh, these, these little nuggets that I shared today 
and stop being ineffective and stop letting the enemy render you uh, useless in the kingdom of God. The, no, the gates of hell will not, shall not prevail against the church, but we're letting the enemy win because we're not doing the simple things that Jesus commanded us to do. God bless you and have a good day.